this work of sanctifying your life, but it's to keep you on this path to holiness throughout your Christian life as you experience the stuff that you go through, as it works and refines your life, that you're going to be on this path of holiness. Blameless. You'll be complete, he says. To be complete is to be with integrity, is to be total, is to be undamaged, perfectly conforming to what Paul and his Lord desire the church to be without blemish or defect. The church blameless in God's sight. The church pushing back on the sin in life. Away from yourself so that the world sees a blameless person. They see someone who's completely different than everyone else around them because they see someone who's been set apart for God's use. Paul would put it this way in Philippians 3.14. I press on toward the goal of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The goal was Christ-likeness. The goal was a diligent effort on my part and divine power of God on God's part. Philippians, once again, chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. In verse 12, Paul would say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And so it makes the focus seem like that we work out our salvation, we work at it in our own strength, in our own power, and it's all up to us. But then there's verse 13 where he says, for it is God who wills and work in the life of those who believe in Him. It's God who works. So it's this, this my effort and God's work effort in my life to bring me to this place of sanctification, to bring me, to keep me on this path of sanctified, the sanctified life, to keep me on this path of holiness, this journey that I've begun. It is the culmination because he says it, it, it will happen at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to keep you without blame at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord comes again, He's going to keep us. So what do we pray? We pray, Lord, keep me on the path of holiness. Knowing that He's going to give me the divine power to stay on that path. But aren't there going to be times in your life when you stray from that path? When you get, when you get enamored with something in your life that you know is not God's will? Or some sin takes over? Or some habit? Or some routine? Or some rut in your life? And you get off on that path? The, the divine power of God and those that are sanctified is that God comes along and He pushes you back on the path. Or sometimes if you're like me, He takes His foot and He kicks you back on the path. He gets your attention and says, get back on the path. I need you to be on that path. I need you to be putting that space in between this sin and your life. So we pray. We pray, God, thoroughly sanctify me. God, cleanse me inside and out. We pray to God, keep me on this path of holiness. And then number four on my outline, or the outline here, is to finish what He started in you. Finish, Lord, what You started in me. Finish it. He says, in verse 24, faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring it to pass. Finish what you started. Paul would say in 2 Timothy, at the end of his life, when he knew his life was over, he's facing ex execution. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course that you laid out before me. I have kept the faith. I have finished what you called me to do. That's what this process is. There's a beginning and there's an end. And He wants to finish that work in you. So we pray, we pray each and every day, God, finish what you started in me. The God who calls is also faithful to complete and bring to pass His work, His sanctifying purposes in your life. Philippians 1, 6, for it says this, For I am confident of this one thing, this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect until the day of Christ. God is faithful. I'll put that on your outline. If you still have your pencil in your hand, circle the word always. God is always faithful. Always. 
You can write Jude, verse 24, next to that. It says this, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. He keeps you from stumbling. He keeps you on the right path. He keeps you on this path of sanctification and holiness. You could write another verse by God is always faithful. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, where Paul would say this, If we are faithless, He remains faithful, for He cannot deny Himself. Once again, there's that preposition, if, which many times you can put the word since instead of if there, and it would read, since we are faithless, He remains faithful. Are you faithful at everything, at every turn, at every moment, at every time in your life? If you can say that, then we'll applaud you and say, praise the Lord that you're faithful in everything. But if you're like me, you struggle sometimes with doubt. And I know sometimes I'll look at my life and I'll say, Lord, how can I do something so stupid? It's as if I'm faithless. But it says right there in the Bible that even when you're faithless, God remains faithful. One more that's powerful in my mind is 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. It's a familiar verse, right? No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with temptation will provide a way of escape so that you will be able to to endure it. No temptation. And it's all because God is faithful. And because He's faithful, He will not allow you to be tempted beyond a certain point. He's not going to do that. There's great security in that verse, in that phrase. He's not going to do that. He promises not to do that. But He's going to, He says in that verse, provide everything you need to live this sanctified life so that you will endure it. You see, God is always faithful, but God is a finisher. He is a finisher. When Jesus hung on that cross, He said, it wasn't the Roman guards, it wasn't Pilate, it wasn't any of those people right there, none of them, those people, took his life. Jesus said, it is finished. And then, it was finished. Because that's what God does. If he has begun a good work in you, He is going to finish it. That is so comforting and brings so much security in the life of Christians, of us who know Him. So Lord, finish what you started in me. Finish it. got to this point in my outline and just thinking through what Paul is trying to teach those Thessalonians and us today. And I thought about how can you know for sure that you're sanctified? How can you know for sure that God is even doing this work in your life? How can you know for sure that you truly have crossed that line, surrendered your life, surrendered your all to Him, how can you really know for sure that you're on this path of sanctification? Here's a checklist. Here's some things to think about. The first one would be that those who are being sanctified remember clearly a time when they weren't. 
Do you clearly remember a time when you weren't? There's clearly a definitive moment in your life when you can look back and know that the sin was ruling in your life and now sin is not ruling in your life. There was a time when you could clearly look back and say, that was it. Secondly, those who are being sanctified are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. If you're sanctified, he's, the Spirit of God has taken up residence within you. How can you know that you're indwelt with the Holy Spirit? Is it a feeling? Is it an emotion that you have? I feel really good that God's there. Is that what it is? Well, the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 9, that the heart is deceitful and desperately sick. You cannot trust your emotions and your feelings so how do you know that you're indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God? To me, I describe it as the Holy Spirit, if He's indwelling you, He will prompt you. The promptings of the Holy Spirit, they are when you realize that there's something in your life and it's not right, and there's some force within you that's telling you, confess it, deal with it. The sin is there. Stop hiding it. Stop being secret with it. The Spirit of God prompts you to confess your sins. The Spirit of God will prompt you about things in your life that aren't right. And you know it. And you sense it within your spirit, in your mind, and in your heart that something's not right. And you, get, you, you feel compelled to do something about it. That's a prompting of the Spirit. The Spirit of God will prompt you to do stuff in the lives of others around you. Maybe it's an encouraging word. Maybe it's a challenge about something you see in their life. Or maybe it's he's going to, the Spirit of God will prompt you to do things. The Spirit of God will prompt you to minister, to volunteer, to do things. Maybe something that you do, he'll, he'll prompt you to do that. He'll prompt you to service. He'll prompt you to say something. He'll prompt you to speak up when truth, somebody's trying to present truth and it's false. He'll prompt you. That's the indwelling of the Spirit. Those who are sanctified have that. Those who are being sanctified have a strong hatred of sin. Romans 7. When Paul said, the thing that I want to do, I don't do. And the thing that I'm doing is what I don't want to do. When my mind is so mixed up, and instead of doing what God wants me to do, I do completely opposite. He finally says, wretched man that I am, who can save me from this? He says, he says, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. He had a hatred of sin. And that's what a sanctified person does. The hatred of sin in your life, and I know hatred is a strong word, but you hate sin. You love the sinner, but you hate the sin. That's what a sanctified life looks like. A sanctified life will, will um, shows discipline. Shows discipline in his life. Peter would say in 2 Peter chapter 1, he talks about one virtue building on another virtue, on another virtue in your life. It means that a sanctified life is somebody that you can see the disciplines in their life. It's somebody who realizes they're holy and they've been called to live a holy life and it affects their behavior. The sanctified life. Those who are sanctified have a strong desire to serve Christ. If you're sanctified, there's going to be a strong desire to serve Christ. Those that are sanctified have a great love for God's Word. Those who are sanctified associate with those who are being sanctified because they know the truth of 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Bad company corrupts good morals. So they know these things. These are the checklists for a sanctified life. I conclude with one, one concluding story. When I'm reading through my Bible and we just read recently through the life of Esther. Esther was definitely someone who was called out by God for a purpose. She was just someone who was a slave, a servant. And God took a slave and a servant and He used her 
to be elevated in the, in the, the court of an ungodly king to be his queen. And then at that moment when something evil was going to be done against all of God's people, the Jewish nation, when Haman had conspired with this godless king to annihilate all the Jews on the earth, and her uncle Mordecai finds out about it, he goes to Esther and says to her, you've got to do something. You've been set apart for this calling. But even if you don't do somebody, something about it, God's going to bring someone else to bring deliverance. But then he says to her, but maybe it's because of such a time like this that God has set you apart and brought you to this place so that you could bring, He could use you to bring deliverance to God's people. And of course, she knew the consequence of going into the king's presence without being announced. You know, the last queen that did that got exiled. If something worse could happen, she could be executed because the king had not called her. She says to her uncle, after much prayer, if I perish, I perish. I'm going to go and do what God has called me to do. And she did. She stood before the king. And because of that, the whole nation of Israel, because of how God used her, the whole nation of Israel, the Jewish nation was saved from annihilation. They even have a certain feast to celebrate that. The feast of her, I believe, is what it's called. They even celebrate it even today. What happened then about how one person set apart for God's use for such a time as this? So, how about in your life? My life. God has sanctified you, He saved you, He set you apart for such a time as right now, this time, this moment. And He's calling you to put that space between sin and your life. See your journey, your spiritual journey is constantly doing that so that you can stay on this path of holiness that He's called you to live. Maybe today is where you do the business with the sin. Maybe today is when you realize that He's called you for such a time as this. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank You for Your Word. I thank You for the challenge of Your Word and Your truth. I thank You, Lord, that You are this divine power within us that moves us along this path of holiness and, and sanctification, Lord, that You're leading us in and guiding us in, Lord. And I thank You for that power within us to live the life that You called us to live. I pray this morning, Lord, that if there's any here today who need to hear Your call to come to You, turn from sin, Trust you and no one else, nothing else. Trust you for their salvation, for their hope in you, Lord. They would be willing, Lord, to just listen to your call today and respond. They would come forward even this morning during our service, confess you, renounce their sin, confess you as Lord and Savior and follow you being baptized into you, even today, Lord, that would make that decision. Lord, I know that you've been working on our hearts today. Working on our hearts. Calling us to yourself. And calling us to holiness. If there's anything in the way, anything that separates us from you, may we confess that sin today and then strive to turn from it and trust you pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me and we're going to sing a decision song. And if you want to make a decision for Christ today, I encourage you to do that. We're going to sing Have Thy Own Way, Lord.
you're busy with us. I'm glad that you chose to worship the Lord with us today. And I'm going to have a closing word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Uh, Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that your grace and mercy and peace, Lord, would go with us as we leave this place. And Lord, I just pray that we will focus on putting that space in between our sin and our life to this week, Lord, so that we can live a more holy life in your sight. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen.